Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you like the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell for notifications, and also don't forget to share your thoughts, comments, and any questions you have in the comment section below the video. This is our pro user guide for the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Our pro user guides are usually stretched out over a couple videos, and it shows you exactly how to take full advantage of the phone. By the end of watching these videos, you'll know the phone back and forth, know how to use all the features and benefits, and also how to troubleshoot any problems that pop up. Let's get right into it. This video is getting started with the phone. We're going to go over the introduction to it, what it can do. We're going to go over a lot of stuff. Let's get started. So really quickly, we're going to go over some of the device features for the S10 Plus. The first thing is it does have wireless power share. That means it gives you the ability to literally charge other devices with this particular device. It's really simple. We'll show you how to activate it and bear in mind that it does suck your own power. So you want to use that sparingly and the charge isn't all that fast. So it's really just in case of emergency break glass type of thing. The next thing is it does still have that Bixby button on the side, but it can be remapped to do other things. We'll show you that as well. It has a brand new triple camera setup. It also has some really cool security features that we'll get into later. It has a expandable storage. It has night mode, gesture navigations, and it is also water resistant with that brand new infinity display that kind of goes from top to bottom with the camera cut out instead of a notch. So now we go around the device a little bit, show you where everything is kind of located. In the back, we have the rear camera. Right next to that, we have the heart rate sensor. We have the power button on the side, the volume rockers on the side, the Bixby button also on the side. And if you're looking for a fingerprint scanner that is not on the device itself, that is located below the device screen. So you actually just kind of tap it to get into the phone itself. And it also has a USB type C charging port at the bottom with a headphone jack. Now, once you first get the device, the first thing you're going to want to do is put your SIM card in and the SIM card tray is located at the top. You insert one of the little SIM card pins in here, it pops up, and then you're basically going to insert the SIM card facing down. So the SIM card itself, the gold tips of it are going to be facing down, and then you slide the SIM card right in, make sure the phone itself is powered off before you put the SIM card in. And then once the SIM card is in, you charge it up and then you're good to go. After the phone has been charged up and your SIM card is in, powering it on for the first time, all you're going to need to do is hold down the power button here for a couple seconds. It's going to illuminate on the screen and then you basically just leave it alone. It's going to go through its power cycle and it's going to power up to the main menu and then lead you through the device setup. Once the device is completely set up, then you'll be kicked out to the main UI and it's the new Samsung One UI, which is actually not that bad. And now that you're out to the main UI, you basically have full access of the phone. You can access all its features, settings by swiping down from the top. You have different settings here by hitting this actual settings icon here. It'll bring you into the main settings. One of the coolest things I've found is that you can actually search for different setting options just by hitting that search bar. It actually works out to be a little bit more convenient than actually going through the phone itself. So this is going to be basically it for the startup of the device. Remember, SIM card gets inserted while the phone is off. Power the phone on by holding the power button for a couple of seconds. Make sure the phone is fully charged. Fingerprint scanner is not on the phone itself. It's located below the device. Water resistant infinity display. It's a fantastic device. Okay, so now that the device is up and running, a couple of things you may want to do is set up your email accounts on it. You can hit the email icon on screen. If it's not already on screen, make sure you download it from the Play Store. You can search for it in here. You can also use the native email apps if you go to settings and then you go to accounts. You can actually go to accounts again and then you can use this to add any accounts that you want on your device. You can set up your voicemail by accessing the phone app and once you're in the phone app hitting this settings button the three little dots on top hitting voicemail it'll take you to your voicemail and you can set your voicemail up for people who inevitably call. I don't know who still calls but some people do. Now you also have the navigation bar located at the bottom of the screen itself. And you can actually go in and make some changes and customize the buttons on the navigation bar if you want. Easiest way to do that is you're going to go into setting. And then you're going to go into display. And then from display, you're looking for navigation bar. 
And then you have the ability to customize the navigation bar in here. So you can actually have it be a full screen gesture type navigation bar. And we'll go over that a little bit later, but you can also have the button navigation bar here and you can rearrange the orders of the buttons down below. And as you see, as soon as I change it, these orders at the bottom change. So right now I have this to display all my apps. This is my main home button and this will function as my back button. I can change it to this being my back home and it's just basically your liking. And also one of the easiest and quickest ways to change the wallpaper on the actual phone itself is just by pressing in a blank space, holding it down and it gives you these particular options going across. It's another way to access your settings really quickly rather than swiping down from the top. Just press, it'll give you these quick settings. You can access your wallpapers here. You also have access to themes, widgets, and again, your home screen settings. And then here you can also add or delete pages if you don't want so many pages to scroll through. And if you just want one main page, you can do that as well. Now in the Samsung Galaxy theme store, you do have the ability to install wallpapers, themes, and even icons. So these are specific icon packs that you can download. Some of them are free, some of them cost, but they'll actually change the way the icons on the screen look to your liking. So you can actually get something if you're football themed or baseball themed, these icons can actually work to fully more customize the device as you move along. And if you hold down again and you go into your home screen settings, this gives you a fully range of customizable options you can do to adjust the home screen grid, how many apps you want to see on screen. If you don't want to see any apps on screen, if you just want an app locker to access all your apps, or if you want to swipe up to get your app, there's a lot of customization options within the home screen setup. So you can kind of go through it. And the idea is just to kind of make the phone your own. It's one of the beauties of actually being on Android is you can fully customize Customize everything to your liking and not have to worry about it in the end. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for our video. If you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications, comments, questions, thoughts in the comment section below the video. Thank you so much for checking it out. Until next time, peace out.